afternoon, everyone. Welcome to a new webinar by this time organized by the chair for the responsible development of the metaverse and Les Les Spain Portugal. My name is Aurelio Lopez Tarrella. I'm the director of the chair for the responsible development of the metaverse of the University of Alicante. Our purpose is to to promote the research on the legal aspects of, of the metaverse. And as I have mentioned before, I'm glad to uh, introduce to you this webinar that we are organizing in cooperation with LES Spain and Portugal. Uh, in this webinar, we are trying to, to discuss, we will discuss some uh, essential aspects concerning one of the so-called attributes of the metaverse that is interoperability. As you may be aware, in all the definitions that we see of, of the metaverse, the word, the word interoperability is mentioned. For instance, uh, 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 Matthew Ball used to call it as a, a network of interoperable virtual worlds in CD formats where we will interact with avatars. But if the metaverse is going to be the next generation of internet, uh, it should work as internet in the sense that when we visit websites, we are able to jump from one website to another thanks to hyperlinks. As you are aware, this is not happening now when we talk about virtual worlds. It would be fantastic to find gates in those virtual worlds, to jump from one virtual world to another, not only with our avatars, but also with the digital assets that we have uh, purchased in one virtual world to another. But as you might be aware, interoperability between, uh, between virtual world platforms does exist, but in a minimal level. We have some examples that work fine, but this is not a general attribute yet of the metaverse. In my, in my opinion, there are three fields, three elements where we have to work in order to achieve that interoperability, uh, technical, economic, and regulation. In relation with the, with the technical element, uh, standards are needed in order to to facilitate this interoperability as you might be aware there is already a metaverse standard forum where things are, are being worked but this is the, this is not the early consortium with these questions are being uh, discussed blockchain will also play a relevant role in the sense that it facilitates the the certification let's say like that of, of ownership of the digital assets you might be aware many of the existing and virtual world platforms are based on, on blockchain so that will facilitate the uh the interoperability between between the things that we buy in one metaverse in another metaverse Second, uh, we will need to discuss, uh, we will need to analyze interoperability from, I would say, an economic point of view, because um, it is certainly true that interoperability will only be achieved as far as the players in the metaverse uh, identify economic opportunities by opening their, uh, their platforms, their virtual world platforms to uh, more players thanks to interoperability. And finally, a uh, last element is regulation in the sense that uh, the regulator can play an important role by promoting or, or uh, uh, asking directly the players to facilitate interoperability. In this sense, we can uh, mention the examples of the Digital Markets Act or the Data Act, where specific obligations to, um, to promote inter interoperability are being uh, included. 
In order to discuss these issues and many more that our speakers will, will highlight, we have decided to divide this webinar in two roundtables. The first one will be devoted more to the technical and economic aspects, while the second one will focus in the regulatory issues. Although, as you will probably see, everything is interlinked, so I'm sure that our speakers will talk about everything in every moment and, and in both tables. In order to chair uh, the tables, uh, we have Luis Ignacio Vicente from PONS IP and also very active in ILES and also member of the scientific committee of the chair. And for the second table, we have David Fuentes, also very active in LES and lawyer in Bird and Bird, Spain. Uh, Luis Ignacio, David, thanks very much for, for coming to me with this proposal to organize this webinar. And thanks also for chaining this, this two round table. The last thing I have to do is to relax and to enjoy both round tables. I'll give you, Luis Ignacio, the floor. Please go ahead, and Luis Ignacio, and thank you for your help. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Aurelio, for your very much introduction and also for promoting this initiative. Because obviously, I think as you're commenting, this is a relevant topic for discussing today. So thank you, thank you so much, Aurelio, for being so pleasure to collaborate with you, obviously, in we're talking about the scientific community of the chair and also preparing these kind of webinars. As, as you're commenting, we can imagine a world with more interaction and collaboration within and across these metaverses that you're commenting. However, the truly unlock this potential, we must address a fundamental question, obviously. As you're commenting, how can we ensure that different platforms, technologies, and virtual spaces within the metaverse can communicate or interact in this way? So we have, as you're commenting, the triple dimension of challenge that you're commenting. And in general, this is where the concept of interoperability takes center stage. And obviously, when we're talking about interoperability, as you're commenting in metaverse, obviously, we talking about how it's possible to work together all these uh, different platforms with a effective way allowing users, assets, or data or to combine all and sharing all these assets. Obviously, we will talk about standards, we will talk about cross platform communications. And for the discussions in this federal table, we have the opportunity to receive three relevant panelists, obviously, the three different dimensions three guys are working a lot about uh, the topic that we will discuss. So for me, it will be a pleasure to introduce uh, Carlos Muñoz Ferrandiz, CEO and co-founder of Alinea, with a relevant legal background from the uh, Max Plan Institute, but also from the University of Alicante. And then this will be maybe the vision for another startup working in artificial intelligence, but also imagine how it's possible to use the new artificial intelligence methods to the new metaverse. Also, we have the, the pleasure to to introduce maybe for the, the second maybe a step uh, Antonio Pita. Antonio is chief uh, metaverse manager of Telefonica, a tech operator. And last but not least, maybe we will listen Rafael Espinosa de los Monteros, CEO of Sport Google. I think this could be the vision of the application development firm because uh, uh, the sports world is working about the, the gaming and, and the sport field. So I, I think we have time because we have maybe one hour and a quarter more or less for this round table. So the proposal so is uh, to dedicate 50 minutes of each presentation and finally to have an open discussions uh, inspired of the presentation that, that is possible to, to listen to. So thank you one more time for the three panelists, as Aurelio is commenting. So I would like to give the floor to Carlos Muñoz in order to know your vision about the metaverse today in December 2023, and how it's possible to promote the interoperability of metaverses from this uh, technical point of view, and in your case, also using the new tools from artificial intelligence. Thank you, Carlos, one more time for your participation in the meeting. You have more or less uh, this uh, 15 minutes. Thank you. Fantastic. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. 
Cool. Yes, cool. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Luis Ignacio, for the kind uh, introduction and also for Aurelia and, and the other coordinators just for the for the kind invitation to to the event. Uh, so glad to be here, especially because I've been uh, discussing for quite a while, I think, also with uh, Luis Ignacio and especially working, collaborating with uh, Aurelio and, and many others like uh, Raul present um, on, on research focused specifically on not just the metaverse, but interoperability and the main role of interoperability and standards within uh, the metaverse. Uh, I am going to keep it really, uh, let's say, focused on uh, the impact of inter interoperability or what does interoperability means for startups willing to uh, play or compete within uh, markets related to um, to metaverse right or, or related technologies so i think as a, so there's one core thing to start with and it is regardless of uh, the context of the metaverse which is basically that um, startups as any other companies playing in markets like metaverse or even artificial intelligence or telecoms telecoms networks internal internet of things are hugely dependent on interoperability and therefore interoperability protocols and said defined market defined standards or formal standards related to interoperability right more and more we see how uh, even startups or just broadly companies benefit from the open source implementation of technical standards, right? So how you could benefit from open source or let's say uh, publicly available uh, code implementing already uh, an interoperability protocol or a traditionally defined as technical specification developed under formal standardization organizations. Like here in the EU, we have uh, the core two European standard organizations and Senele, which is two different ones, and Etsy, right? Um, from a startup perspective, you realize, and from a strategic perspective, it is not as easy for a startup to get in this kind of standardization discussions, which are going at the end of the day to lead to the draft of the interoperability related startup, right? Everyone interested in playing a core uh, role within, in this case, markets related to the metaverse are going to uh, want to have a say when it comes to the technical features or technical contributions for the development of interoperability related standards within uh, the metaverse for, for instance, two different metaverse platforms from two different companies that could be, for instance, Meta and another uh, big uh, interoperability player, how these two platforms could even uh, be interconnected, right? Um, but at the same time, within even just the concept of one metaverse, it could be meta metaverse, it could be even Telefonica's metaverse, right? How do we enable a lot of different features, like for instance, tokenization, cryptos, or even avatars, right? Coming from different companies or different players to be basically used, right? And developed within the same platform provider or platform metaverse platform, as it can be, again, one of these major players, I'm just, you know, imagining like Meta, Telefonic, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, from a startup perspective, I, I think it's quite interesting because you can, you have to imagine that some startups, even within the AI field right now, nowadays are playing with what we call diffusion models or stable diffusion based uh, or fine tuned models. So basically models that can automatically generate an image based on a prompt, right? A prompt is the instruction you write to the LLM in order for the LLM sorry, the foundation model to generate an image, right? You can imagine that in some uh, metaverses or even internet or just related video games in, if not nowadays, they are already testing it in a few years from now, they are going to use these models to automatically generate in real time images in a very specific format for uh, the player or for the user of this metaverse, right? All these, uh, uh, is going to be based, of course, on very specific formats, data formats, which at the end of the day are going to be based on interoperability standards, right? So again, all these new players or all the startups we are playing in this kind of field are going to need to get access to these kind of interoperability related features. Um, from an access perspective, if these standards are open, it's going to be easy, right? So open specifications based on either public domain um, related terms or even uh, permissively licensed related terms such as open source licenses, 
permissive open source licenses might be like an Apache 2.0 license, a BSD license or an MIT license, right? So really enabling access for us, for the startups to this technical documentation, which is essential, right? If we want to compete and to play in these kind of new markets such as metaverse related markets. That's one thing of the story. The other side of the story is when, for instance, a startup wants to play a role also within decision-making of how the standard, the interoperability standard is drafted, right? And this is more difficult because normally a startup does not have the financial nor human means to be able to be an important player within this type of decision-making platforms, right? Because our main focus right now is not on standardization or policy strategy, is on building the product and talking to our customers, full stop, right? So we are more going to be dependent on how do we access this technology or interoperability related protocols within the stand, within um, metaverse related markets. If what we are developing, for instance, is a set of tools to automatically generate avatars, right? For a video game within a metaverse or even to automatically generate tokens for a very specific utility within uh, the metaverse. So again, just for startups, of course, these kind of interoperability protocols as for any other company competing are like key. Probably for us, it's going to be a bit more challenging or difficult, right? To implement and to understand these heavy uh, protocols. So of course, ideally it should be for us as smooth as possible if I had, of course, uh, a wish list for this. Um, and I think last but not least uh, aspect to, to cover from, so I, I think I cover more like the intersection between the economic and technical perspective for a startup. It would be the intellectual property uh, strategy perspective, right? Because when we uh, refer to access to an interoperability protocol or access to code enabling these kind of interoperability standards, uh, behind this probably there's going to be a big piece of intellectual property either copyright related uh, works, right? If we are speaking about source code or even uh, patents and more specifically, as some of us know within the standardization context, which is a standard essential patents. I am not going to deep dive today because I think it is not the main aim of, of, this, uh, of this event to dive onto standard essential patents. But in any case, right? So when you deal with access also as a startup, you deal with the contractual perspective of signing either R&D agreements to develop or commonly develop our technology within a very specific type of metaverse, or you deal with access to not just the technical specification of the interoperability protocol, but also all the intellectual property covering the technical contributions upon which this interoperability protocol is based. And when you are negotiating this, it is going to be, of course, as a startup, also a core uh, challenge. Hopefully, if uh, this comes from a big tech provider. They have very specific licensing programs for startups because, of course, we do not have the financial means uh, in terms of royalties as some other big players do, right? So, as you may see, I, what you just what I just want you to understand is that there are different perspectives when you uh, speak about interoperability within the metaverse, and from the vision of a startup, all these perspectives set different challenges for us, right? So this is just my, my perspective and my experience. And of course, I'm super open to take any questions you may have. No, thank you very much, Carlos. Obviously, I think a lot of reaction from, from your speech. Uh, and in your open question, I think it's possible to talk about standards of intellectual property and the end of also our accessibility of the, uh, maybe startups to the metaverse. Because in any case, I could see that's a huge opportunity for startups in, in Europe and generally the world also to take part of this uh, metaverse world because obviously I think this is a critical moment for, for create the new world. So thank you, Carlos. For the second panelist is uh, Antonio Pita, Chief Metaverse Manager of uh, Telefonica, Tech Operators. Obviously, Antonio, the floor is yours. Thank you one more time, Antonio. Second, I can share my screen. Wait a second. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Well, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me. I'm very glad to be here. 
uh, today with the second I can Okay. Uh, well, uh, Carlos said a lot of things about interoperability in the metaverse. I'm trying to complement these things with a vision uh, from a telco, from Telefonica. I want to confess that regarding the metaverse, we are uncertain of how it will evolve over the next years. Nowadays, metaverse is a big concept. Uh, everyone has their own definition of metaverse, and first of all, uh, at Telefonica, we differentiate between the concept Metaverse and Web3. We are going to talk about the Metaverse concept and it's related with, uh, with the thing that we consider the evolution of the interfaces. However, what we do know is that Metaverse proposes a new, more human way of relating with technology. We consider Metaverse as the evolution of the Internet and the evolution of the interfaces. We began with the punch card a long time ago, and today we can talk to technology using our voice and words. Nowadays, uh, we find ourselves in an increasingly interconnected reality where the boundaries between physical and digital realms become less distant. The digital experience at our disposal are becoming more diverse, human-centric, and especially immersive, incorporating technologies that embrace the concept of extended reality, virtual reality, augmented reality, mixed reality. Just like other interfaces, these new interfaces uh, will provide a pathway to maintain connection with our customer and offer them unique and memorable experience, experiences. To success, address this challenge in the, the interoperability challenge, Telefonica has defined a framework composed of four layers. Uh, by the customer point of view, the first layer is the experiences layer. In this first layer, users are transported into immersive virtual world. The challenge here lies in the absence of standardized interfaces. Imagine simply transitioning from one virtual environment to another, as Carlos said before, or interacting with various platforms within the metaverse. Nowadays, this is impossible. The current lack of standardization is in this layer inhibits such fluent experience and is a focal point of our discussion on metaverse interoperability. We are working hand on hand uh, with companies like Meta and Microsoft to minimize interoperability issues in this layer because we consider that uh, in the future we need to assure that the interoperability is a reality, is become a reality. Uh, moving to the graphical engine layer, the second one, we encounter the technological uh, powerhouse that breathes life into the metaverse. Engines like Unity for re virtual reality and Niantic for augmented reality, where well, there are more, but the, this, uh, these ones are the ones that we uh, have partnered with them. Uh, we, while these engines excel in creating a stunning visual, uh, the sense of a standardized communication protocol presents an obstacle because every experience is created over one of these engines. And we, make we need to make sure that you can talk together to be sure that you can uh, uh, share different elements, different assets between them. The diverse languages used by these engines hinder uh, effective communication and collaboration preventing interoperability among the elements that make up the experience created on these engines. So we need to be sure that these engines are going to talk each other to be sure that they, this uh, problem uh, disappears. The third layer, the devices, we consider that are the ticket to the metaverse. You need one to go to the metaverse. If you don't have any device, you can go in. Where we're talking about device, we consider immersive device. Of course, you can go to the metaverse using a smartphone or using a laptop, but we consider that the holistic concept of metaverse is related with an immersive device, like uh, headsets, for example, MetaQuest 3 and so on. In this layer, uh, we confront another facet of the interoperability challenge. Each device offer an unique and captivating experience or group of experience and has their own application store. 
but the lack of standardization protocol for cross-platform communication avoid an adequate interoperability. You can use the same experience product from one device to other. Normally, the creator, the developer, need to create both or more, depending on the different heads that you are using. We are working with companies like Meta, Pico, and Sony to uh, uh, understand their devices and build experience that can be consumed by any of them, striving to converse toward complete interoperability because every headset has their own capabilities, their own functionalities, and we need to, um, to establish this uh, minimum common division uh, that we are going to be sure that all of them are going to work properly. Furthermore, it is advisable to collaborate with chip manufacturers of these devices, like or such uh, Qual Qualcomm, uh, to extract the maximum common potential from all of them. Because also in the chip, we have a lack of interoperability because you can change one of for other because they allow you to do different things. Uh, due to the rapid growth uh, being experimented and the multitude of companies involved, because we are talking about game designer, we are going to talking about chip manufacturer, we have talking about uh, big companies, global big companies like Meta and Microsoft, we are encountering uh, various initiatives based on different technologies and approaches. This has led to a problem of interoperability between the different experience engines and devices available. Uh, the lack of this uh, interoperability pose challenge in terms of seamless integration and compatibility between different platforms, devices, and technologies. It hampers uh, the ability to create unified experience and limits the potential for collaboration and widespread adoption within the standard reality ecosystem. Addressing these issues requires a collaborative effort among industry stakeholders to establish common standard protocols and framework that facilitates interoperability. This is the reason that we are member of the Metaverse Standard Forum. By promoting open and standardized uh, approaches, we can overcome barriers and enable a more cohesive uh, uh, standard reality ecosystem where experience and devices can seamlessly interact and provide enhanced value to user. As you can see in the slide, there are a lot of different companies in this forum. Uh, you can see chip manufacturers, big companies like Microsoft, Google, technical uh, companies, um, and telcos. That is important because we talk about four layers, but only three of them has been talking about. And the fourth layer that we consider is the backbone of the metaverse uh, uh, because the metaverse reside in the communication network layer. We consider for us, for a telco company, we consider that this layer is the most important because it's the one that ensures that the application are going to, to be, uh, to enjoy the customer uh, and needs to be smoothly to be sure that this is engaging the customer. This layer forms uh, the connective issue that links virtual experience, graphic engines and device uh, with end users. <clears throat> and for us, to be sure that we are going to solve all the interoperability problem, we need uh, first to understand what are the interoperability problems related with this layer, the layer that is, big, uh, is more relevant for the telco. To turn Metaverse into a reality, we have invested in a new generation of technologies and network cap cap capabilities that are transforming the way we create and deliver connectivity services. These network pillars include edge computing, low latency technologies, and extending softwareization of the creation of new telco services. All of them are nowadays standardized to ensure the interoperability of communication component for all telcos. And this is a very good news because telcos uh, have the job done. We are sure that any uh, application, any engine, any chip can use our uh, connectivity services in a, the same way for all the telcos in the company, and uh, and that's 
but not least, the, we have a new initiative that is multi-telco. Almost all the telcos in the world are working together to create a standard way of personalize the uh, network. In this case, the GSMA uh, initiative called uh, Open Gateway is being generally developed by all telcos companies to ensure the interoperability of, of communication network. Open Gateway entails the network transformation into an open, customizable platform, empowering experience creators to tailor their use of the network via APIs. Bank of, uh, by configuration, by configuring, sorry, the network to suit their specific needs, creators ensure that their experience can be seamlessly consumed in the most fighting manner. For example, you can preserve a bandwidth of our communication network to be sure that your content, your experience, immersive experience, is going to be uh, to reach the customer in a perfect way, uh, avoiding lag and so on. This collaboration uh, or this collaborative, collaborative uh, effort reflects a commitment to establishing a standardized practices that enable seamless communication and connectivity across diverse telecommunication networks. Open Gateway stands as a testament to the industry dedication to fostering an unified and interoperability, interoperability, interoperable <clears throat> digital ecosystem, enhancing the overall efficiency and effectiveness of communication infrastructure. Bringing our analysis together, all these different layers, our proposed framework aims to address this interoperability challenge comprehensively. In fact, we consider that it's a good point of view to understand the different problems in the different layers to be sure that the different companies related with any layer can establish a solution that all the rest of the layer, all the rest of the chain can use to be sure that our experience are going to be the best. This framework serves as a roadmap towards a more interconnected, collaborative, and inclusive digital frontiers for the metaverse. And later on, if you want, we can talk about that. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Antonio. Very, very interesting because obviously we were talking about the technical approach of the interoperability of metaverse. Obviously, I think your speech is, is very aligned. So we have a lot of challenges, but it's possible to discuss maybe uh, at the end of the webinar, even at the end of this particular roadtable. Also, it's possible to identify as I recommended at the beginning some topic related to the regulation, also, because uh, I think it's uh, yeah. like what they're commenting. A very topic topic. Uh, obviously, but also it's very interesting also the interconnection with uh, the new technologies, the three pillars that you're commenting, so latency, computing, obviously, and programming network. Uh, fantastic. So, thank you, Antonio. And last but not least, this is the, the turn for the third panelist, Rafael Espinosa de los Monteros Iglesias, CEO of Sport Google. And also, maybe this is the, the approach of the vision for the application development tool. Thank you one more time, uh, Rafael. Also, you have also your 15 minutes for discuss about your approach for interoperability inter okay. inter inter of the metaverse. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope everything is going okay. You can hear me. You can see my screen. Um, yes. So thank you very much again for, 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 for allowing me to participate here. My name is Rafael Espinosa. I'm the CEO of eSports Bureau and also uh, from Crypto Bureau, which are media that it's related to uh, understanding these new ways of, let's say, or, or let's call them entertainment, because finally the way we see it is that uh, mostly or most of the of the situations where the metaverses are being used, it's in, in terms of uh, entertainment. Just call it by being them games or whatever, but that's more or less the vision that we have about them. So I just want to highlight a few things and maybe then we can discuss uh, more in depth in the, uh, in the, in the meeting. Uh, but first of all, I would like to start by saying that, okay, which are the main problems of interoperability? And I would say that, uh, first of all, we need to understand the technology that we have behind the metaverse, because there can be many different technologies. Uh, as you are seeing right now on the screen, we can be talking about 
uh, metaverse in, in or, or web 2 as uh, one of my colleagues were discussing before or web 3 or whatever i just want to highlight a few things here in terms of technology at the beginning of the session we were saying that okay we want to achieve an interoperability uh, somehow the same way we have achieved interoper interoperability when using internet that's quite true because in the end it's true that the protocol that lies uh, uh, um, under the uh, when you are uh, um, browsing with a web browser etc it's already there but for example when you are when you are using a web browser it's different depending if you if you are using i don't know uh, microsoft uh, edge if you are using opera um, uh, mozilla or whatever so even in web browsers we are still having problems or some kind of problems of uh, interoperability so when going to different metaverses and the technologies that relies uh, uh, below them we can be talking about different things like uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality. And if we open the box about using in the background uh, some kind of blockchain technology, that's a, that's a whole mess. So the first problem that we have, it's related with uh, technology. And, and by technology, I also mean about the hardware, which is quite, in, quite difficult to have uh, some kind of interoperability between different systems and i will explain later my personal opinion about what what can we achieve with uh, interoperability so in the end it's a very basic definition of interoperability but it's a metaverse project with interoperability features and interact with a different metaverse project each other utilizing the same services features enable cross-chain social connections etc cetera, etc cetera, right so in the end it's for example, can we by by going back to the same to the first screen? It's okay if we are in sandbox. Can we uh, take our let's call them things, and then we will differentiate later about uh, these kind of things, uh, avatar, digital assets, etc., etc. Can we take them to the central land? Okay, that's some of the things that we are going to try to to see, and I will give you my perspective on what what can we achieve and what we cannot achieve, right? Uh, just just for you to have uh, and i'm i'm not going to expand a lot in this uh, in this slide because i think that my previous colleague has already spoken very well about different layers or whatever depending on who do you ask uh, there will be different approaches uh so i'm i'm going to pass about this i prefer to go to this one which is okay uh, when i was saying how to share different things between metaverses what are we referring to so we are referring to avatars we are referring to services and features, obviously APIs that we were also discussing about them before, a storage. But from my perspective, and I, I have to say that this is this may be a very specific perspective from, from the one which is uh, very related to the gaming industry, which is one of the most important sandbox in terms of uh, this kind of technologies about virtual reality, mixed reality, blockchain, etc. From my perspective, the most important things uh, or one of the, if we have to give priorities to different things in order to achieve interoperability, my guess is that uh, based on the on the uh, real cases that we are experiencing right now, maybe we should focus on assets and gaming collectibles, right? So I'm gonna use the, the example that everyone may use these, these days, uh, which is, okay, imagine that for example, I'm in Fortnite, because yes, we can call, uh, we can say that Fortnite could be a metaverse, right? So imagine that I've been expending, I don't know, a lot of hours in uh, Fortnite, and I've been, um, and I have achieved uh, one axe, one sword, whatever, one shield. Uh, it took me like I don't know, 30 hours uh, to achieve this, and then based on whatever the publisher of the game decides they want to do, or the developer of the metaverse, or whatever they change the rules etc cetera, etc cetera, and i see myself uh, uh with with something that it's not what i've been uh, working for and spending my hours in the sense that for example imagine that my sword was i don't know level 50 and then because of a rebalance in the game uh, slash metaverse my sword is now instead of level 50 level 25 right that's that's something that can happen uh one of the things that uh, not so many people know is that uh, just just I have to say this because I think it's important that uh, the person or the responsible between behind um, a blockchain like Ethereum is Vitaly Buterin, 
Uh, the reason why he started watching or understanding what blockchain could uh, could give to the people, it's it's because he was a player of World of Warcraft, and that's exactly what happened to him. He spent a lot of hours playing WoW, uh, spending real money, etc. And then one day, Activision Blizzard came and said, "Look, I mean, your level 50 sword, it's now level 20, and all the efforts, hours of playing, etc. that you have done." Uh, we can somehow uh, take it back uh, because it's our game. So we were discussing, or one of the panelists were discussing at the beginning, the sense of property, right? The IP. Yes, the IP may be long. Uh, that's quite different and uh, quite difficult. And I think in the second in the second table it will be more clear. Uh, depending, or the idea is to give the property to the to the player or to the one who is spending some time on some hours in the metaverse right so that's one of the things uh, that we should focus right now on how to make it in, in, interoperable and by making it interoperable interoperability means that first of all i have to be the owner of the asset that's one thing and the second thing and more important thing is that by being the owner of this asset i can take this asset from one metaverse to another right that's the the most important concept, uh, and it's the most important one, but at the same time, I think it's the most basic one. But if we do not understand this and how to solve this problem, we are not going to achieve interoperability, never, right? So, okay, what takes to take, or, or, or what does it mean to take one asset from one metaverse or one game to another? There are two, uh, important points that I would like to discuss here. One is the technical aspects of being interoperable, but the other one, I'm not going to say the the legal aspects. I'm going to say the how to say this in English. I, I would say if we really want uh, to be interoperable, and you are going to understand me uh, in a moment. So first of all, and I agree with some of the things that have been said at the beginning. First of all, I have to say that it's necessary to have some kind of a standardization. You are using, as I said, different um, different uh, technologies, different hardware, different blockchains under the metaverse, et cetera, et cetera. So if we do not manage to have some kind of a standardization so that technically speaking, the different protocols, et cetera, et cetera, the different technical aspects are uh, working together and everyone, uh, knows how to develop these assets, how to prepare them, et cetera, et cetera, that's not going to be possible. The good point is that, yes, I mean, uh, some people were, were discussing here about, yes, there are different initiatives in order to achieve a standardization. That has been very common, not only in metaverse, but in every kind of technology that the, uh, the humanity have de has developed. We have always come to the conclusion that we needed some kind of a standardization, right? But that's, and, and I, know I don't want to be apocalyptic, apocalyptic, but that's the, the good point of view, and that's something that I think we can achieve. On the other side, where I think there are some problems or, or some impediments in order to achieve this interoperability, it's because you have to think about that behind all this, there is a business. And uh, by having a business behind this, it means that different companies are developing their own technology. And uh, this is hard to, to realize or not, but you have to realize that if you are uh, somehow attaching uh, to a specific standardization model, where is your value or where is your technical differences, different point, right? Uh, uh, that gives you value. So there are two things of thinking about this. One is, okay, I'm not going to have value based on the technology. I'm gonna have value based on the content. That may be one thing. But if your value, uh, your added value resides on the technology, it's gonna be quite difficult that uh, we can achieve a standardization, right? So uh, this, I think this, this <laughs> This, this slide uh, illustrates it very well, where you have 14 companies competing for whatever technology. As I said, I mean, this, is, this doesn't only happen in, uh, in metaverse. It happens in every kind of technology and in every kind of business, right? Uh, so it, they are saying uh, we need to develop a universal standard that covers everyone's use cases. And the situation is that uh, you, need, uh, you end up having another, uh, 
another protocol, another standard or whatever, right? So just to, to illustrate this, uh, bear in mind uh, what some of some testimonials that I have uh, uh, said before, I have put here, sorry. So for example, Neil, Neil Trevet uh, from the Metaverse Standard uh, Forum says that there is always a dynamic tension between proprietary technologies often controlled by larger companies and often interoperability standards. Uh, the fact that the forum has gathered over 2,500 member organizations is a testament to the intense industry interest in the uh, interoperability disabilities. That's right. I mean, that's true. There is interest in uh, having some kind of interoperability. But as I said before, at the same time, there is an interest in having something unique that is going to be your selling point uh, to the customers, right? And that's what, what the CEO of Ready Player Me says. Interoperability needs to have a no-brainer business value, which is quite difficult to achieve, right? Because we are all here in order to, to win money. So his hypothesis is that if you sell items in your game that work with other games, then you can sell more items. That would be a good approach, a good intellectual approach. But that's not happening right now. It hasn't happened in any other industries I've seen. For example, in gaming industry, uh, I don't know if you are gamers or not, but for example, the, the same uh, game developed for different consoles or different PCs, etc. when they were having online services, they do not have cross uh, playing in the sense that if I am a user of, I don't know, PlayStation system, I'm using, I'm playing the same shooter uh, than if you are a Xbox uh, user. And normally what happens is that the servers do not work the same way. And I cannot have a match between players from other systems. And this is not uh, because technically speaking, you cannot do it. This is because you want to have your own part. So my guess, and that's, that's somehow what I wanted to show you uh, today, and then we can discuss in the, in the questions is that Yes, it's true that we can achieve, technically speaking, part of interoperability, but on the other side, my guess is that based on companies and, and based on, on the fact that this is a business, I don't think uh, we can achieve full interoperability because each company will want to, how to say, we want to keep their own uh, added value points uh, and not to share with, with the rest of the people. We have seen it in, for example, in blockchain. Uh, yes, the concepts are right, but every single developer of every single blockchain are trying to develop different and unique uh, features, functionalities, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So yes, maybe inside one uh, blockchain we can have achieve a standards. That's the way that NFTs, for example, have has uh, raised. But uh, when we want to trespass these different assets between metaverses, game, etc., it's going to be really difficult. And even if you want, and I go back to this example, even if technically speaking, it could be possible, the point is, why am I going to give uh, some functionalities or, or some of my items to another company so that my customer goes to another company and use whatever they have done with my service and call it a game, metaverse, etc., into his own metaverse game or whatever. So my perspective uh, in terms of interoperability is that we can achieve interoperability up to some point, and it's true that all of us want to have some kind of uh, technical interoperability in order to have some basics and some standards. But my guess is that achieving full interoperability is going to be quite impossible because this is a business, and when companies are, um, I don't know, I, I don't want to say fighting, but when they are working in order to achieve part of the of the cake, uh, this is not going to happen. That's my perspective, right? Uh, maybe we can discuss uh, right now. So uh, thank you very much and, and hope you have uh, enjoyed, or enjoyed or you have at least uh, have found this interesting. Okay, thank you very much, Rafael. Very, very interesting one more time because of the approach. I think it's, it's brilliant. Considering maybe at least two topics. First, obviously, I confirm. I think gaming or in sports is one of the key applications. When we're talking about metaverse, also when we're talking about interoperability, because we have these problems about the assets, how it's possible to set assets. And also, as I really commented at the beginning of the webinar, also people I mentioned also consider the business, no? because at the end we're talking about the business. I decided to promote maybe some benefits 
for all the, the stakeholders in order to promote this interability, because also it's possible to imagine maybe different metabels or maybe or, or economical frameworks. No, okay. so so I, I as, as we're committed, I think we have time for maybe three or four questions at least. So I, I would like also to to listen one more time, Antonio and Carlos, or obviously Rafa. Um, so my, my first question for for you is is maybe nice or easy is about the the who is maybe the the, the, the who, who is defining the the the, the governance model of metaverse? No? So the question is how obviously who can we ensure since this communication of data exchange uh, within different metaverses? So who, who will be the only maybe the public obviously the private sector the European Commission as Carlos is commenting. Thing is no one. The, an the current answer is no one. Another idea is that maybe some companies or maybe some uh, companies from the private or public sector can join in a forum and try to make agreements that allow to um, reduce the cost of develop their solution, uh, creating a standard. But um, the problem is no one is going to own this. In my opinion. No, thank you, Antonio. Uh, Carlos, for example, with your also startup vision. Um, yeah, I, I think from from my side, it's going to it's going to depend on again on the context. So so if we speak about governance within a single metaverse and the metaverse is owned by a company, so you already know uh, the governance mechanism is going to be set on the terms of service as when you use ChatGPT with OpenAI, right? Uh, so this is one point. If we take a more institutional or um, perspective, like for instance, a formal standard development of organizations, as you may know, Luis Ignacio, such as Etsy, for instance, then the governance protocols are going to be the set of rules under which either Etsy or European competition law and the regulation on, on standards are set, right? So you're going to depend on which. And then as I think also, as Antonio was mentioning, Probably if we go to some kind of open source related community, such as back in the days, Ethereum, et cetera, and we have the same analogy within the metaverse, of course, we are going to tend towards a more decentralized approach towards how we define governance, because probably taking a step backwards, the main question would be, first of all, how do we define governance in which very specific context? And then we can speak about who is governing uh, what. Thank you, Carlos. Rafael, please. Also. So I'm going to say something. I don't know if the people from the second uh, round table will, will agree with me or not. It's it's quite difficult to define and to regulate right now uh, what can we do or what can we or we or what we cannot do in the sense that uh, you have always uh, uh, listened to this phrase, which is technology goes ahead of regulation. Right. Yeah. So right now it's going to be very, dif very difficult to try to regulate something because we do not know yet what can happen or what can we develop with the metaverse. So my guess is that in the end, and I agree in part with, with Carlos, who is going to govern this? Either the company or from my perspective, the customers in the sense that there is not going to be a space for, I don't know, 100 metaverses. I mean, in the end, People is going to use one, two, three, maybe four or something like this. So the users will be the ones saying, this is the metaverse I like. And then based on this metaverse, we will have to do the things uh, in the way that this metaverse does the things. Because otherwise, I mean, people, the users of the metaverse are the one commanding. So that's my guess that we have to see what metaverses survive. Uh, what can we do with these metaverses and then once we have uh, something that we see it works, we will see uh, how to apply different things uh, to them. But I think this is not the holistic concept of metaverse. Metaverse is only one, it's going to be interoperable, but the problem is this, this holistic vision is, is going course. to be very far the from the one that you are thinking that there are a lot of metaverse with different uh, objectives and with business behind that are going to compete for the attention of the customers. I think I, th there are two I agree. I agree, Antonio, the same way that the uh, blockchain is supposed to be decentralized, right? Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, of course. I have come, I agree with you. I have come to, the, to, the, to, the, to the understanding that that's not true. I mean, technically speaking, it's okay, 
but in terms of regulation, etc., that doesn't exist. Well, we are working trying to create this this uh, block this blockchain decentralized uh, and the concept of DAO, DApps, and so on. And we are creating in Telefonica different servers that uh, try to help to create this kind of of I don't know I don't want to call services. Um, because the customer are going to pay for the application to be running, but uh, we think that we can create this decentralized uh, application that can be governed by the the people that is um, working in this in this group. But uh, we, I, I think we are very far, and we are not sure that it, this is only a dream or maybe our business behind i think today is very is very early for all. i agree i agree and also i i the mouth of rafael and antonio are talking about levels of layers obviously in the network and in the traditional approach so it's possible to imagine interoperability of different layers and also within those layers different uh, scenarios or so metaverse that we are so thank you very much maybe my second question is talking about the challenges so what are the current challenges in achieving interoperability in the metaverse? Because you are talking about technical, we're talking about startups, you're talking about maybe also the business approach. But what is the, the most relevant challenges in, in order to accelerate the killer application in the next months so or years? So Antonio, for example, challenges for metaverse for, for you? Well, the telephonic well, perspective. <laughs> yes, in Telco we have we have a, an association and re related with the Telco layer. I think we can, we have created a solution for the interoperability, and we are working all together. And I think this is the the real challenge is how we're supposed to put together a lot of different companies from different sector and different size like Unity, Apple. Meta, Microsoft, all work together. If we are not going to to uh, to make an agreement and how the 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 smartphone uh, are to are going to be charged, if we are not going to make an agreement that how we consider that may we are going to make an agreement in how the metaverse can be and how our order standard. Um, I'm member of uh, a group. Um, uh, relating with the standardization of the metaverse, trying to create the the next ISO uh, ISO standard, and mm -hmm. today today we are trying to create the 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 index of the thing that maybe we consider that must has to be uh, standardized, and maybe in three four five years maybe we have this this index. So uh, we are going very very uh, very slow. And maybe we are we are going to have a lot of problems because uh, until we have this standardized ISO that maybe are going to help us, the technology and the companies are running very fast and are creating are creating technology more faster that the regulator can establish the standardization uh, protocols and the regulation and so on. So the problem is how to put all the companies uh, together to make an agreement about all the different things that are related with the metaverse. For me, it's almost impossible. Yeah. Interesting. Also, I don't, Rafael, we're talking about challenges for, for the metaverse for the next month. Challenges, I, challenges. I, I mostly agree with, uh, with Antonio in the sense that there are going to be Technical aspects, I think there are some kind of aspects that technically speaking are going to be quite difficult to be completely interoperable. Maybe I think I see it more in the sense that, for example, a few companies or a few uh, developers go to this uh, core of standardization and other ones go to this other one. For example, if we are talking about Web3 or whatever, okay, there are a lot of companies developing under Ethereum or Ethereum virtual machine. So, okay, we can have some kind of standards. If you go now to block uh, to Bitcoin in ordinals, etc., they are going to have their own standards. So it seems that there is, in case we can achieve some kind of interoperability, it's like somehow there are going to be like two different uh, ways. And and every single time that uh, you develop a new technology or whatever, if we are not talking about interoperability, but we are talking about associations, for example, which is in terms of business, 
uh, instead of being one association, which is okay, let's push together, it's like okay, association one, association two. It always happens, so it, it's it's very difficult, mainly in, in two aspects: in in the technical aspects, because there are technologies that it's I'm, I'm not saying it's quite impossible to mix them together, but it's really difficult. And in the second part, because uh, in terms of business, as Antonio said, I mean they are developing their own R and D. Etc. Invest in millions, so it's going to be quite complex. Okay. Interesting. A lot of chance that we have, but also Carlos, with your approach from the startup world. Yeah, I think from from my perspective, probably there's going to be increasing competition. That's for sure. Uh, probably because. Um, my main background is on intellectual property and I'm a lawyer. I, I, I just see uh, challenges and probably a lot of nice intellectual property strategy work uh, when it comes to, you know, access uh, the market and probably some even not just copyright, but patent based strategies. Let's remember that already time, time flies already like more than two years ago. Uh, Meta, so the, the Crypto Open Patent Alliance was created, COPA, Meta, um, almost some months later, joined the Crypto Open Patent Alliance because they were super, super interested in, of course, achieving this kind of neutral defensive patent place where they could basically innovate when it comes to token-based or tokenized transaction systems, specifically for their metaverse. Because of course, let's remember that two years ago, they were like full in with the metaverse. Um, so you realize how essentially it might become when you're thinking about patent strategy or patent portfolio in this case. Okay, th thank you, Carlos. Also, are you right to talk also deep in, in technology, in particular talking about blockchain, because I think you mentioned uh, the, the blockchain also where when we're talking about the governance of metaverse, we're talking about the DAOs also, the, the, and, and these kind of things. Um, with your perspective, uh, uh, what role can blockchain technology play in the cross platforms interaction in the metaverse? So blockchain is a key technology for, for metaverse, because uh, Antonio mentioned it, low latency edge computing, program networks, but also I think the blockchain is, is, is there. No? Uh, I think we maybe starting for, from uh, Rafael, for example, what is the, the blockchain role in, in your metaverse from, from the sport? I mean, bear in mind that even when we talk about what is a metaverse, and we have been discussing this before, there are different points of view. I mean, it's this game, like Fortnite, is it a metaverse or not, right? So many people say that we were having metaverses about uh, 10 or 15 years ago, and maybe it's true. My perspective is that what makes a real change, uh, and not only blockchain, we can call it Web3, as we were discussing before, what makes a real change, change between what we had uh, before and what we have right now is this possibility of being the owner of the assets. Uh, part, apart from the services that we can have, that we can interact with the metaverse, that maybe we can buy whatever, something in the metaverse, and then it goes uh, and comes by Amazon to our physical house or whatever. That's something that, okay, that's amazing, but we somehow could do it before, right? Well, what we couldn't do uh, before is being the owners of, uh, of these assets in this digital world. So from my perspective, Web3, it's, it's absolutely mandatory. There has been a lot of, how to say this, initial user cases that uh, maybe they, they were not the best ones, and this has created a lot of, how to say, a lot of, um, I don't know, um, controversy between the users and um, public. Uh, in the end, I think we are going to be, we are going to end up using different blockchains or whatever in a very friendly user way. People, it's not going to realize that they are using blockchain web three services or whatever but what they will see in the end is that the user experience and what they can achieve with uh, metaverses etc it's real it's something really new and they will forget about the technology this in these forums is where we have to take care about interoperability technology etc but for the end user i think it's going to be a, a, a as we say a real game changer and i, I think it's absolutely uh, the key for the future okay Thank you. Thank you, Rafael. Very interesting also. Uh, Antonio explains very well the difference between metaverse and Web3, because I don't worry about Web3 different things. So, uh, Antonio, please, would you? Yes, I think the sense of metaverse 
is that the technology is learning your interfaces. If I move the, he the head, the, the technology is going to understand that and change my point of view. The sense of web test is that, uh, that the Rafael is saying, you are going to be the owner of the assets. But for me, the blockchain, I like very much blockchain. I, con I consider that the idea is very smart and is transforming a lot of different point of view. But the problem is that uh, I'm not sure that the blockchain has the capability for the number of transactions needed to, to fit any metaverse or whatever we consider. Uh, for example, in the banking system, uh, a lot of association of banks uh, try to create some kind of uh, payment between banks using blockchain to be sure that we can um, 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 be sure that the other is going to pay. But the problem is that the number of transactions per second that you can do with this technology is few. It's not enough. It's, it's, it's enough to create a small application. It's enough to POCs. It's enough to um, a friend, a group of people doing something, but it's not enough to a uh, social network is not enough to a world that is going to have millions of assets. And this is the main problem that in theory is a good idea, but the problem is we consider that the blockchain is not so mature to be sure. So the companies are creating uh, two layers, technology layers, one behind with the blockchain that is only going to be used in a few cases to create your avatar, to create your ID, and you are going to have a database to do all the different things. And it's not going to be web free for my opinion. So um, it's, it's like a something fake. So the problem is that for me, blockchain is not so mature. Uh, and of course, the cost of uh, minting a blockchain continuously is, ve is very expensive, is not going to, to work. So we think we need to uh, investigate more in this technology to create another uh, way to work with it. And maybe in the future, it's going to be a very good approximation. But nowadays, we consider that not. Thank you, Antonio and Carlos. Did you bring about blockchain? Because from also from regulatory, from a lawyer perspective, but today, at least that's where round table we're talking from the business and from the technical approach. And did you position about the yeah. yeah, so so for me I, I think when it comes to blockchain there are um or yeah, well yeah, blockchain <laughs> there are two main uh points or or it may serve two uh, nice purposes. I think one of them, so very instru instrumental purposes, one of them would be tokenization, of course. So this is one that I couldn't think of a best use case uh, within uh, the metaverse context, that's that's for sure. Um, you see even companies outside of the metaverse that could well be integrated within the metaverse, such as for instance, Ocean Protocol, where you can even tokenize your personal data or any other type of data, right? Um, so that's one point. And the other point would be DAOs. Uh, DAOs, I think, are super, from a legal perspective, are very seducing, uh, very, very interesting. But it is quite the exception. It, they haven't become like the general rule, to be honest. So it is not as easy as uh, to really justify a nice use case for a DAO, uh, even though it might seem uh, super, super promising, I think, in my opinion. And I would love to see more uh, in the future. Yeah, thank you, Carlos. We have only five minutes because obviously the time is flying when we're discussing about these topics. So for for finishing, uh, I would like to, to maybe to listen a headline, maybe a, a conclusion for each one of you about the current situation of the metaverse and when we're talking about the interoperability of metaverse within the, the challenge, within the, the main topic that is going to consider for the audience, for when the people that is landing in the metaverse world, is the, the main challenge or maybe the, the main challenge that is possible to share from your experience to this new incumbents and right into the metals. So the, as conclusion, two or three highlights from each one of you. Rafael, please. So my conclusion should be that uh, we we as we are still far from from having a, a clear idea of what metaverse is. And in terms of interoperability, it's 
up to what point do we want to achieve the full in interoperability? Thank you, Rafael. Antonio, please. Well, I say the same that Rafael and a little bit more. Uh, there are a lot of companies trying to work together, trying to create this interoperability, or maybe the association that Rafael talked about uh, previously. And we think that we are at the moment that we need to be, to divulgate a lot about the, the benefits of Metaverse and Web3, both, uh, to be sure that the customer can use it properly and avoid all the risks that we have identified. Okay, Antonio and Carlos, please. Yeah, I think for me the the really interesting thing to that I would love to see in the in the near term when it comes to the metaverse would be even more open source communities, even more open source projects. There are already, so you can see them, but even more uh, boosting the ecosystem, such as I mean, if you go to the AI space or the AI uh, market, you see platforms like Hugging Face, for instance, just boosting open innovation. Uh, within AI, I would love to see also this in the metaverse because it would be just uh, fantastic. Well, uh, I concur. You three are relevant specialists in metaverse because it's not an easy topic to talk about the interoperability of the metaverse today. But uh, one more time, thank you very much for your contribution. Also, I uh, also it's possible. I suggest you also to participate in the question from the second round table, because also it's possible to challenge some particular perspective from regulatory and from the technical and business perspective. Well, thank you very much. I, I think according with the agenda, we have a break, maybe 10 minutes now, and also welcome to the second round table, managed by, by the requests in 10 minutes. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, bye.